Hello, class, and look here at this picture. I was wanting to tell you about the story of Ricky Tiki Tavi, but before we do so, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what a mongoose is. What is a mongoose? Now, I mentioned it in a previous video. Well, here's a picture of one. Here's a real picture of one, of what they actually look like. And uh, this comes from an old magazine clipping that I had. Cute, isn't, isn't it? Now here's another picture showing how the mongoose stands up on its hind, hind legs and uh, standing among the scrubby plants of the Kalahari Desert, actually, in this photo. This yellow mongoose stretches his lean body upright, probably in search of a meal. And if you look, yes, he is in search of a meal because look, in the picture down here, he's going after a ground squirrel. And of course, the mongoose also eats things such as lizards and fruit and insects and birds and bird eggs. Now, there are many larger uh, uh, mongoose species go after snakes. And as you'll see in the story of Ricky Dicky Tavi, that's indeed what happens as the mongoose seeks to protect the boy. Well, finally, the snake tires and the mongoose clamps its sharp teeth into the snake's head. That's what happens in the wild and how they find and attack their prey. Now, the mongoose live in many places in the world, but most of the 38 species live in Africa and Madagascar. And if you look at the picture there, you see where they mostly are located, Africa. And if you look down over where India, the bottom part of uh, Asia is there, you will see where they live too. They also live in some islands, Hawaiian and, and the Caribbean islands. And you can see the grid and the legend at the bottom of where mongooses live. So I just wanted to show you a little snippet of what the mongoose is before we go and introduce our story. Now look here. Ricky Tiki Tavi. And of course, this is from, uh, written by Rudyard Kipling. And there's Ricky Tiki Tavi. And here we are beginning our story. This is the story of the Great War that Ricky Tiki Tavi fought single-handed through the bathrooms of the big bungalow in Sigalo cantonment. Darzi, the tailor bird, helped him, and Chichandra, the muskrat, who never comes out into the middle of the floor, but always creeps round by the wall, gave him advice, but Ricky Tiki did the real fighting. He was a mongoose, rather like a cat in his fur and his tail, but quite like a weasel in his head and his habits. His eyes and the end of his restless nose were pink. He could scratch himself anywhere he pleased with, one, with any leg, front or back, that he chose to use. He could fluff up his tail till it looked like the bottle brush and his war cry as he scuttled through the long grass was Rick tick, 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 tick. One day, a high summer flood washed him out of the burrow where he lived with his father and mother and carried him kicking and clucking down the roadside ditch. He found a little wisp of grass floating here and there And he clung to it till he lost his senses. When he revived, he was, lay, he was lying in the hot sun in the middle of the garden path, very draggled indeed. And a small boy was saying, here's a dead mongoose. Here's a dead mongoose. Let's take him in and, and dry him, his mother said. 
Perhaps he isn't really dead. Well, they took him to the house, and a big man picked him up between his finger and thumb and said he was not dead, but half choked. So they wrapped him in cotton wool and warmed him, and he opened his eyes and sneezed. Now, said the big man, he was an Englishman who had just moved into the bungalow, don't frighten him, and we'll see what he'll do. It is the hardest thing in the world to frighten a mongoose because he is eaten up from nose to tail with curiosity. The motto of all the mongoose family is run and find out. And Ricky Ticky was a true mongoose. He looked at the cotton wool, decided that it was not good to eat, ran all round the table, sat up and put his fur in order, scratched himself and jumped all on the boy's shoulder. Don't be frightened, Teddy, said his father. That's his way of making friends. Ouch, he tickled under my chin, said Teddy. Ricky Ticky looked down between the boy's collar and neck, snucked his ear and climbed down to the floor where he sat rubbing his nose. Good gracious, said Teddy's mother. And that's a wild creature. I suppose he's so tame because we've been kind to him. All mongooses are like that, said her husband. If Teddy doesn't pick him up by the tail or try to put him in a cage, he'll run in and out of the house all day long. Let's give him something to eat. They gave him a piece of raw meat. Ricky Ticky liked it immensely. And when it was finished, he went out into the veranda and sat in the sunshine and fluffed up his fur to make it dry to the roots. Then he felt better. There are more things to find out about in this house, he said to himself, than all my family could find out in all their lives. I shall certainly stay and find out. He spent all that day roaming over the house. He nearly drowned himself in the bathtubs, put his nose into the ink on the writing table and burned it on the end of the big man's cigar for he climbed up in the big man's lap to see how writing was done. As nightfall, as nightfall came, he ran into Teddy's nursery to watch how kerosene lamps were lighted. And there he is looking. When Teddy went to the bed, Ricky Ticky climbed up too. But he was, restless. he was a restless companion because he had to get up and attend to every noise all through the night and find out what made it. Teddy's mother and father came in, the last thing, to look at their boy, and Ricky Ticky was awake on the pillow. I don't like that, said Teddy's mother. He may bite the child. He'll do no such thing, said the father. Teddy's safer with him, with the little beast, than if he had a bloodhound to watch him. If a snake came into the nursery now. <laughs> but Teddy's mother wouldn't think of any, anything so awful. Early in the morning, Ricky Ticky came to breakfast in the veranda, riding on Teddy's shoulder. Here he is again on his shoulder. And he sat on their laps. They gave him a banana and some boiled eggs, and one after the other, because they were well brought up. Mongoose always hopes to be a house mongoose someday and have rooms to run about in. And Ricky Ticky's mother, she used to live in the general's house at Sigurli, had carefully told Ricky what to do if ever he came across white men. Then Ricky Ticky went out into the garden to see what was to be seen. It was a large garden, only half cultivated with bushes as big as the summer houses of Marshall Neil roses, lime and orange trees, clumps of bamboos and thickets of high grass. Ricky Ticky licked his lips. This is a splendid hunting ground, he said, and his tail grew bottle bushy. 
very bottle bushy at the thought of it, and he scuttled up and down the garden, snuffing here and there till he heard very sorrowful voices in a thorn bush. And class, what do you think he heard in those thorn bushes? Well, you're going to have to wait to see what happens in part two of the story of Ricky Ticky Toffee. So until then, you be looking for the next part and stay tuned for the continuing story.